them emails, Steve. Jesus. After watching that, man, I will never eat another Kit Kat Chunky again. You know what I'm talking about. I believe in a thing called love. Just listen to the rhythm of the heart. Whoa, man. I didn't even know I could reach them high notes. I've only just gone and achieved it. This, my friends, is Van Cam. This is what you've waited for. Probably not. But anyway, I'm Kev Ashford. Like I said, this is Van Cam. This week, Man United have beaten St. Etienne 1-0. There's been a bit of a meltdown on, on Twitter and that. A few people slagging Mourinho off. Why did he play a full-strength team? He can't win the man, can he? I'm sure if he'd have played a shit team, that everybody would have been, been the same, wouldn't they? They'd have been moaning, oh, he's played a shit team and all that. Tell you what, that, that was a tricky uh, tie, that. Fair play to them St. Etienne fans as well. The bastards never shut up, did they? And even when they went behind, they still never shut up. I think Mourinho looked at that and thought, you know what, if, if he'd have thrown a few kids in on that, uh, if it had been them that had got the early goal, the tie turns, doesn't it? If they got a second, they're well back in it then. So I'm all for this getting the job done. And then if you want to rest the players, do it then. I just think that his hand was forced in this game because of uh, the injuries that were picked up. And obviously the, the sending off for, for Bailly. But fantastic goal from, from Mkhitaryan. Bit upsetting, really, in it that it looks like he is going to miss out on uh, Sunday's cup final. Uh, he could have done a bit of damage, but luckily, I think this is an area where we, we can actually bring somebody back into the team. We're quite strong in the the kind of number 10, 10 role or out wide, so I think we're pretty much covered. Uh, yeah, good good result, and uh, we march on it in the next round. And preparation is for Sunday. The cup final at Wembley. Can't, cannot wait, man. I'll touch on that in a bit. Uh, in the previous video, I did mention Wayne Rooney. Uh, at that point, a, a lot of speculation saying that he was going to move to China. And lo and behold, he's now decided he wants to, to stay at United. So he's, he's not going to be going at least until the summertime. I mean, I can only think with Rooney. He doesn't... I mean, he struggles to speak English. Never mind taking off to China and regardless of the money, if it's a million pound a week or whatever it was, Rooney's looked at it and thought, you know, the culture, everything about that place, to uproot his family and bring them there, you're thinking, nah. You know, if he wants to, maybe America would appeal, so we'll have to check on that one in the summer. And I did say it in the previous video, I just can't see any other Premier League clubs really being interested in him. And I'm not knocking him, I'm not saying anything bad about him. I'm I'm just pointing out the fact he's coming to the end of his career. He's not a man that really looks after himself that much. So, uh, would Chelsea be interested? No. Man City? No. Arsenal? I don't think they would. Tottenham? No. He don't fit. And, you know, Everton? He could see him rocking up at Everton, but would, would Koeman want him? I really don't think he would. He's got a good young squad. Why, why would you... You know, bring somebody in like Rooney. Anyway, I'm sick of talking about that fat, silly Scouse wanker. Uh, the first segment of the show, you've been waiting for it. It is Fellini Watch. Okay, so this week, like I touched on before, we beat St. Etienne 1-0. Fellini was on the pitch. And quite simply, at the end of the game, I didn't think he did too bad. Voice went a bit squeaky there. Uh, didn't think he did too bad. But he just tweets after the game through to the next round. I think it was a hashtag MUFC. And again, same as last week, he photobombing. But this picture, you can clearly see he's in this group hug. There's players, there's Ibrahimovic, there's Pogba. Fellaini's got this kind of shots look. He's in the huddle. I honestly think he's thinking, what am I doing here? How did Man United ever sign me? But I'm there. I'm there in the mix. And with all these superstars, and I literally think he's starstruck and he cannot believe it. His big bushy ginger head is in the middle of it. That's the end of Fellaini Watch. Okay, I cannot do transfer bollocks this week. 
I did give you the Griezmann uh, latest last week. There is a reason I can't do it. Disco Dave uh, took some MDMA on Friday night last week. He was out in Manchester. He'd been to Fifth Ave. Uh, apparently, he was singing to the Arctic Monkeys. He's, he's come out, kind of uh, red stripe in his hand. And he's seen a scaffold, you know, this scaffold tower around a building. Now, Disco, being a knobhead like he is, has tried to impress these girls at a bus stop. He's climbed the tower. Uh, when he's got halfway up, he shouted, I am Superman. He's tried to jump. Now, obviously, Superman is a fictional character. And for Disco Dave to even think that he had human superpowers where he could fly is pretty much fucking ridiculous. He's only ended up breaking his two legs and that is him out the action for a while. I've tried to message him, but he's not allowed to use his phone in the hospital. So this weekend, before I go to the final, I will go and see him and I'll bring you the latest on Disco next week. We're looking ahead for the cup final. Unbelievable developments today. Uh, phone call. It's me mate, Ashy. You will not believe it. I said... Please don't, no, it's not what, all right, sound. He did go to Thailand with me. I was having nightmares, thinking back to that time, but he assures me it was nothing to do with that, and it wasn't. I've only gone and boxed off a cup final ticket. I'd already booked the coach to go anyway, so it was sort of hit and miss whether I got one, but I made a pat with me mate and said, even if we don't get one, we'll just go anyway. So I'm still trying to box me mate up one off, but it looks like... I am boxed off, which is great, because I did not want to travel four hours on a coach. Really, I'd watch it in a pub, but there we go. I would have done it, but yeah. Anyway, for this bit, bit we are looking ahead to Southampton. Get your thoughts in on the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. What are you saying? Yeah, blood? Get it in, and let me know how you would line up against Southampton, because what I've done, I'm spitting with the Jose iPad is, and with the power and technology of Van Cam, I mean, look at this, and look up there, it's beautiful, new artwork man, I'm moving up in the world, uh, and here we should be able to display my starting 11, what I would go for, now this is providing, I'm taking Mkhitaryan and Carrick are injured, uh, so they're obviously not in, but here we go. You should see it now at the side. So, number one, David De Gea. I'm not going to start doing all that because it will take ages, man. Left back. Here's the wild card, Ashley Young. What do you think about that? I don't like Damian playing left back. I've always said he's a right back. So, why waste him playing left back? Ashley Young, the last two games, has been pretty much great. So, I would put him in at left back. Bit of pace down that left. And he can back up my left-sided player, who's Martial. In the middle, I've got Mike Smalling and Eric Bailly. Naughty boy getting sent off midweek. But he's back in for the cup final and Valencia right back. If these are all fit, that's my back four. Moving into midfield, Pogba and Herrera. Yeah, because, well, Mkhitaryan's not, not about. So them two, and obviously Carrick is injured. I've got a three in front of them, Martial out left, Juan Mata in the holding role, the number 10 role, and Rashford out on the right. Them players will all swap about anyway and do whatever they want. And Ibrahimovic up front, of course it's big Ibra. You've just put him up front, he scores goals. That would be my starting 11 for the match. It really would. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Uh, there might be a poll jumping in at the corner here. Agree, disagree. Let me know what you think, yeah? So Southampton in the final of the EFL Cup. Uh, yeah, that's about it. I've not done analysis on Southampton. What I will say, I know everyone thinks it's um, I might be leaning off on a joke, but I do actually like Southampton as a football club. I respect them. I like everything they've done. They've maintained premiership status. They continue to sell the best players, but that is not their fault. Uh, it's the way that they develop and get these players into the first team. So maybe teams like Chelsea and Man City, who don't promote youth really and give them much of a chance, they just buy in all the top talent, loan it out, 
never given really a chance. Maybe they should take a look at a team like Southampton and think, how the fuck are these doing this? And bringing through and developing such good youth players. So that would be my words of wisdom for the day to, to them, knobhead clubs, Chelsea and Man City. Moving on, moving on. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I've got a treat. I was looking back. I've, I'm always looking for things on Van Cam. I will do your comments in a minute. But I'm looking uh, back on the FA Cup last weekend. An absolute corker. I'm in the car. Boom. I've got Dre on. Driving along. Checking out the ladies. I'm not. I'm a married man. I'm sorry I even said that. The wife will tie me up by my testicles. But I was looking at... I wasn't looking, I was driving. Dre, I'm not Dre Beats on, what am I on about? David Bowie's on, that is great as well. I'm driving along, fuck me, I'm losing track. I'm driving along, right, and I hear, I'm listening to the match Leicester against, or Millwall against Leicester, and at the end, they've scored a last minute goal, and I hear, oh, it's bad scenes here. The, the Millwall fans are on the pitch, they're running towards the Leicester fans. There's thousands of them, they're goading the fans. We're going back to the 70s. This is disgraceful. So I'm thinking, this is typical. This stigma that is attached to Millwall, it's happening again. They're going to kick fuck out the Leicester fans. But then I got home and I thought, I'm going to check out what actually happened. Now, there's only one way you're going to get a clear view. Get on Twitter. You type in Millwall, uh, Leicester, and the fans are on the pitch golden, the, you know, the Leicester fans. It did seem a bit, bit of banter and all that, as uh, Richard Keyes would say. But the main thing for me was, there was a bloke there, and I looked at him in the picture. I've done the old thing, zoomed in, and I start laughing to myself then. And then I'm thinking, this is one of the best things I've seen in a long time. It did make me cry. It did make me laugh out loud. It was a bloke in a string vest. <laughs> what is all that about, man? A bloke actually goading the Leicester fans. He come on dancing. He's like giving it some. He's in a string vest. Now, what was this guy thinking? That morning when he set off to watch Millwall against Leicester, he's got his gazelles on. He's got his Bosch jeans on. Maybe a Lacoste polo top. He's got his, you know, his Henry Lloyd cap on. The Stone Island coat is going on. He's heading out the door. Mary, I'm leaving. I'm going to the match, aren't I? He's a geezer. He's at the door. And then one thing's clicked in his... I forgot the string vest. The lucky string vest. He's back in. He's upstairs. The polo's off. Stone Island coat. The cap comes off. And the string vest goes on underneath it. Maybe it's his lucky string vest, but for me, that is what football's all about. It really is. And in a time when a footballer has been made to retire from Sutton United for eating a bastard pie on the sidelines, things like this just restore my faith that the beautiful game, there are moments, yeah, granted, here he is. It should be at the side here. But even the guy on the crossbars he's obviously a bit of a dickhead but this guy who's got the string vest on he's a character he is the guy kind of guy who i want to meet i look up to and i would love to go you know for a pint with he looks an interesting wild card so that was me look back on the week next up it's your comments okay hear me now here we go with the comments from last week these are usually taken from YouTube, so get commenting, or it can be from Twitter as well. But the first one is from Nathan Fitzsimons. He says, ha 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 ha, daft cunt. This is brilliant. I bet he's quality out on the lash. Nathan, lad, I am. I will try to be anyway. Some people don't like me, but you can't be everybody's cup of tea, can you? Somebody people, some people like Yorkshire tea, some like PG tips. It's just the way the gravy goes. Is that even a saying? Probably not. Next up was Lewis Wells, and he said, Never knew Peter Crouch was a secret Man United fan. Gives a wink and says, Keep up the good work with a thumb. Uh, if you've watched this, Mr. Wells, you will know that I take the Peter Crouch thing uh, highly offensive and basically just hope that you don't meet me down a dark alley because 
I will give you a Chinese burn, my friend, and inflict serious pain. Dan Gammond, a regular on the old van cam in the comments, always comments. Uh, he said, well, what do you know? Another, this was on last week's uh, uh, van cam. Another great fan cam from Kev Ashford. I could listen to you all day. So don't worry about making the videos too long. If anything, it's almost disappointing when it's over. Like when you've got a really nice cup of tea and you get to the end of it and you wish you had more. God bless Kevin Ashford. God bless you as well, Dan Gammond. God bless you indeed. The next one up was Elfie, the gaming elf. What a name. Is that your real name, son? Like it, man. He said, great video, Kev. Nearly pissed my pants. Nearly pissed my pants when all that water came out of the Dre Beats. I did explain last week the Dre Beats. Uh, Disco Dave assures me it's a new cooling system on the Beats. Uh, and basically, because the Beats are so loud pumping your ear, the water cools them down. The question to win the Dre Beats uh, was set, and it was what football team did I represent in the South Manchester League? Few people have answered. Well, I have to say a few. There's about four in the draw that have got the correct answer. People are going wild for the Dre Beats. But Jack N. Brad Gaming, he said, answer, Fiddler's Green. He is correct. I'll give you the answer now. I'm running it over another week. Just fire it in the comments and you're in the draw. Somebody will be selected at random. He said, do you think the headphones would fit for Laney? They wouldn't. Uh, he would need to get uh, the Dre Beats version uh, I think they're called Afro Beats. Uh, they're a new one that are on the market, and they basically they've got the you know the extra plastic on the outside. But to, in response to Jack and Brad Gaming, probably the comment of the week and easily it was from Hayden Burgess who jumped on the answer, which was Fiddler's Green, and he said, "I thought that was just a park full of sex offenders." God, Hayden Burgess, I want to be you, son. What a sense of humour. Loads of sarcastic bastards in the comment section. That is what I like. Quality. Comment of the week, son. If I had a cap on, I would take it off or tilt it or whatever the fuck you do. Here we go. I've been practicing for this one all week. Somebody come in because last week I had a nightmare with a comment section. Didn't do me homework. And there was some mental names that I couldn't really pronounce. I was like Alan Brazil on TalkSport trying to do that George Chakapokalokopis name but uh somebody said i challenge you to say my name because he's seen that i struggled last week so here you go sunshine it's arpan batachiji i think i have pretty much nailed that one on the head i'm gonna say it again because i think that was word perfect arpan batachaji yeah let me know how i got on i am proper giddy man uh ricky clarkson was up next and he said you don't look like Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch looks like you. Yeah, that is the shit I'm talking about. That is Latan Ibrahimovic shit, innit? I should put that as my slogan. I don't look like Peter Crouch. Peter Crouch looks like me. Toto is on. That is getting cranked up for the comment section. Hopefully there's no copyright issues. Ryan Yates, he busted in. Where do you think we'll finish in the league and can we win the Europa League? I think United are set up to finish fourth this season and I really do think we will win the Europa League because Tottenham are now out. So we've got to be favourites to win it. I think we will. Mourinho takes all these cup competitions seriously and the fact he played that team against St Etienne shows that this kid is not fannying about, is it? Jimmy Bond. Jimmy Bond, man, is always in the comments, always leaves messages. He said, Kev, lad, are you paying for that haircut in instalments because it ain't fucking cut right? L-M-A-O, which means laugh my ass off. Jimmy, lad, I take offence to that. I had a haircut last week. I thought I was rocking it. And then I did a poll. Uh, whose hair was better, mine or Fellaini's? And fuck face Fellaini won it. Unbelievable. Uh, Adrian Smith, congrats, Kev, on the new haircut. But I'd go back and kick fuck out the hairdresser for making you look like Ryland Clark. Unbelievable, man. And you know what? I had a scale and polish at the uh, thingy the other day, the, what you call it, the dentist. Look at them bad boys. He actually got them that Hollywood smile that Ryland Clark has got. Another depressing lookalike. Can anyone come up with something fucking half decent, man? 
You're not doing me ego any good. Peter Crouch, T-Bag from Prison Break, and now Ryland Clark, who is an absolute fecking gobshite. Dan Gammon back in the comments. Moving on. Would you consider putting would you consider putting footage from your trip to the cup final in a video if we win? I really don't think so. To be honest, and it will sound funny again, it's hard enough me doing this. I don't, I don't, I'm not really comfortable in front of a cam, in a camera, in front of a camera. Believe it or not, uh, if somebody wanted to follow me round while I was on the piss all day and film me, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But I'm not one of them who's at a game getting the phone out, filming the match. You know, once I get in there, I've had a few drinks. I want to watch the match. Never understood all that filming games and. Uh, even, you know, on old vlogs and all that, people do it. Whatever you're into, man, I'm not going to dish you. But at the same time, I'm not going to be at a service station having a can of beer and filming myself. Uh, let's see, I might get some pictures or something. Uh, Banana Man 1, where did you get your fleas from? Looking for something like that for walking the dog. Please let me know. Cheeky bastard. You cheeky bastard, Banana Man 1. This, my friends is a puma top it's a retro number it's got a bit of paint on it it's doing a bit of paint in that look it's retro my dad well i inherited it off my dad basically uh it's a quality top but i do get the joke man them fleece wearing dog walking bastards huh uh and then jackman 12 you're getting in on the comments purely because you sent me a load of messages this week and he said love your video so much you're the funniest person I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Woo! The ego is being fed. I love it, man. This week, I, well, I'm wrapping up now, but this weekend, we are playing. Let's get this crop. I bless the rains down in Africa. That's because United are playing Southampton this weekend at Wembley. The hard hat is going on. Enjoy the game. Let me know what you're thinking. I've got a shout to get in over Toto. Go on, United! It's the EFL Cup Final! Let's do this! The voice is going. <laughs> it started with a kiss. Never thought it would come to this.